Shalom, back with part two. And again, we'll get to, you know, St. John's 3 and 16, all right? And again, how it links up, you know, with uh, Psalms 98, 1 through 3 and uh, Revelations 14 through 5, which is the new song, all right? So we're doing this first so that we give you understanding, all right? This is Revelations 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. What's the hour of temptation? The MOTB, the Karagba. Okay? Remember, they've already told you, all right, that they're going digital. Okay? That they're going to crash the system. All right? And they want to digitally tag you. Okay? You understand? And you all know what that is, the MOTB and the Karagma, all right, that digital device, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So it's a test, right, to try them. So we're going to go to the word temptation, and this is going to give you the clarification to the understanding, all right, of what the MOTB and the Karagma and who's really responsible and why it's being done, who's bringing it, the most high is. Let's prove it. We're going to go into the blue letter. Give me a minute. Okay, here we are in the blue letter. All right, let's go to the word temptation. All right. So for many of you all out there, thinking you understand, that you go, well, you know, we're not going to be here for Jacob Trouble. There's, there's a thing called the rapture. The only people that are going to get raptured up into the chariot are Israelites. You Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, plus our brothers and sisters, if they're of the elect that are scattered into those other Gentile heathen nations, okay? If they're of the elect, then they're going to get shipped up. All right? Do you understand? So they may look like the other nations and speak in that nation's tongue. Nonetheless, they're Israelites by the seed of their fathers, all right? Because we were scattered into the four corners of the earth. All right. Strong's G, 3986, Pyrasmas, Pyrasmas. All right. G, 3986, right in the Greek. We're going to go right to the points here, people. All right? B. The trial of man's fidelity, integrity, virtue, and constancy. See? Trial. Test. From who? You're going to find out. I already told you. It's the most high. It's going to tell you that itself. Scroll down. Adversity, affliction, trouble. Right? We've already read these things. Right? We looked up tribulation. Right? Acts 14.22. Adversity, affliction, trouble, as in Jacob's trouble, sent by who? The Most High, Yahweh, and obviously his son, right? Serving to test or to prove one's character, faith, and holiness. Yeah, the Lord's going to test you to see if you're going to jump ship, bail out on it. You know, because, you know, you know, the heat has been turned up. Okay? You understand? All right. Now we're going to scroll up, go back to the root word etymology here, and we're going to get more understanding. All right? Right here, number two. To try, make trial of, see, to test for the purpose of ascertaining, right, a person's quality or what he or she thinks or how they will behave themselves in the fire of adversity, as in Jacob's trouble. Do you understand, people? Do you get it? And how's the Lord going to do this? Using Esau, Edom. Okay? The wicked. All right? The dragon. Okay? The old serpent, which is the devil and Satan here on the earth. You understand? That man of sin. The son of prediction. All right? It's going to use him to do it. See, 
to try and test one's faith, virtue, character, by enticement to sin. So Esau is going to dangle the carrot. What's one of the ways he's going to do that? Well, right now they're doing what? They're taking out all these uh, places of storage, you know, uh, for wheat, for meats. Yeah, he's bringing the famine, but it's actually the Lord that's doing it. Okay, so the famine is real, and we've been telling you this stuff for years, okay, that it was coming, okay? Uh, the, the men of the Lord, they don't have anything to worry about with the famine, all right? Because what is it? We read that, what is that, Isaiah, the 65th chapter? Uh, the servant of the Lord shall eat, all right? So we don't have to worry about that. All right? We put our trust in the Lord. All right? And again, people, how often are you going to be tested? What does it say in Revelations 2 and 10? All right? What does it say there? All right? Uh, some of you shall be cast into prison. Yeah, detention centers, FEMA camps. All right? But the Lord tells you, right? to, uh, you know, be a good soldier, right? You know, matter of fact, I'll take us over there, all right? I just don't want to simply quote it, okay? But let me finish this first. See again, people here, of the Most High to inflict evils upon one, right? In order to test them, right? To prove his character, and steadfastness in the faith. So you have to be grounded and rooted in these scriptures. You understand? Now, let's get over there to Revelations uh, 2 and 10. All right? See, Revelations 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Right? You have to trust in the Lord. Again, you have to be rooted and grounded. Be steadfastness in your faith. All right? Behold the devil... And again, this is not talking about some guy in a red spandex suit with two horns, a tail, and a pitchfork, or a trident underneath the earth. Okay? That's all BS. That's a fairy tale, like Santa Claus. All right? So grow up. All right? It's not talking about the spiritual entity Satan. It's talking about Esau. He's the devil. When you look up the word devil, it's talking about man who plays the part of the devil here on the earth. Not only plays the part, but he also worships him and that he is opposed to the Most High. Talking about man, all right? And Satan simply means adversary. See, he's the adversary of the Lord, the Edomite. Why? It goes back to the birthright. They didn't get it. Do you understand? Jacob, our forefather, got the birthright, which means that we have it. We're the descendants of Jacob, the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. We're the descendants of the 12 patriarchs, the 12 sons. Remember, it went from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. All right? All right. So he's going to cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. You already know that. We've proven that. That ye shall have tribulation ten days, maybe ten days, maybe less, maybe more. Be thou faithful, right, even unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. What is that? Immortality, salvation, a new body. All right? Co-heirs to the kingdom with Yahweh Shai, right? And you know that this is actually going to happen. Some of our people are going to be beheaded. Okay? It tells you that in Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Much like what we read, give me a minute, go to Revelation 12, 17. What does it say here, Revelation 12 and 17? And the dragon was wroth, right? Right? Angry, right? With the woman, the woman is Israel, you Negro Latinos, Native Americans, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Okay? That's you, Negro, Latinos, and Americans. All right? You're the remnant 
all right, of Jacob and the 12 sons, the patriarchs, all right, the other remnant of the sea, which, but in particular who? Them which keep the commandments of the Most High, all right, and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, Wahamachiyah, the ones that have the truth, because it's this truth that's destroying them, okay? These videos and going out there, street teaching, you know, we're bringing, you see, our reality is becoming their reality, all right? It's being brought forth, okay? You understand that? It's being brought to light. It's being brought forth, okay? All right, give me a minute. Yeah, as I was saying, it's being manifested, which means being brought to light, brought forth. Okay, we're speaking it into existence, okay? Now, we're going to get into, uh, you know, giving you the understanding. We're going to go into uh, St. John's 316, all right, and the breakdown, all right? Give me a minute. All right, let me just uh, finish this before we get into it. So we'll get into St. John 316. We come back uh, with part three. All right, and we'll probably do a part four as well. All right. Um, and he had power, talking about Esau, Edom, you know, the Edomite B system, all right, the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. What is the image of the beast, people? And no, it's not a picture of Caesar Borgia, all right? It's not talking about Christianity, all right? The image is that of the Roman Empire, okay, which is the fourth and last beast. And it'll refer to it here as the first beast which the Edomites worship, okay? Talking about the Roman Empire, all right? The fourth and final beast. Because America, Babylon the Great represents the last leg and extension of the revived Roman Empire, along with NATO in the EU, okay? All right. So you had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should both speak, right, and cause as many that would not worship the image, in other words, worship what? Its ways and customs. Its draconian laws, its harsh and severe laws, okay, which are against the Israelites against the poor, the Lord's people, right? The meat, the poor. As he would not worship the image of the beast that they should be killed. And I already quoted to you Revelations, the 20th chapter. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, all right, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And they did what? They did not worship the image of the beast, okay? They did not take the mark of the beast. You understand the the karagma, the MOTB? They didn't do it. You understand? And since they held fast, they fast in their faith, they were beheaded. But what? They went on to live with Jehovah Shai, as it says there, a thousand years, meaning forever and ever, because you're going to be in the everlasting kingdom, which is here on the earth. In other words, they're going to get new bodies. Okay? Because your spirit's eternal. All right. So, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark. That's the karagma, the MOTB, right? In their right hand or in their foreheads. You see that? You want to know about the foreheads? Go look up uh, Elon Musk, Neuralink. Go look that up. All right. And that no man might buy or sell. So you see, you have to get that, right? MOTB, the Karagma, in order to what? To function in society. If not, you, how are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to eat? See? So, but you already know this is the Lord testing you. All right? Say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Again, the international banking family, your cabal, your shadow government, goes back to them. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, what is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score six. 
Six, six, six. All right, people, we'll be right back, all right, with uh, part three. Shalom.